Okay, this is the marker float we're going to make. It doesn't look much, but uh, this is a battle scarred one made from a ping pong ball, cork, got some reflective tape for use at night, but that's been a bit painted over. But that's what we're aiming to make today. So, check through the materials we need. We need ping pong ball, wooden barbecue stick. Some cotton and a piece of wire. And you'd have a sharp knife, scissors, some reflective tape if you're working at night, and some no nails glue. Uh, oh, and we need a wine cork. Unfortunately, I haven't got one ready, so we're going to have to um, pull one out of this bottle here. So just bear with me while I deal with this a second. This is the hardest part of the job, I think, getting the cork. Voila. So there's it. Cheers. Well, that's, uh, that's better. We'll just have another one, I think. Oh, right. Ready? <coughs> one more. Ah, right, right. Now we're ready to start. The start. Yeah. Uh, where do we, where do we cork? That's what we came in for. Okay, well we start by bending the wire into a, a nice shape to form an eye. We're going to whip it onto the end of our uh, bamboo skewer. It just helps to flatten off the ends. And we're going to whip that on like that with just a piece of black thread. So we keep a bit for finishing off the whipping. doesn't have to be very pretty because you're not going to see it at the end of the day. There we have it very crudely, crudely on, just uh, like to seal it off with a bit of no nails. I say you're not going to see it, so it doesn't have to be very pretty, and it isn't. Okay, we have the eye on the end of a bamboo skewer. We just push it through the ping pong ball and push it right into the ping pong ball like that. We've got an eye on the end. Now we're going to put the skewer through the cork, but where the cork fits onto ping pong ball, it helps just to carve out a little piece of cork, a little hollow, so it makes a better a better join. Again, it doesn't have to be pretty, because you're not going to see it. And nothing I do is pretty. So there we have it. <coughs> a bit of hollow in the end of the cork. Just the Skew it through, <coughs> through the ping pong ball. Now, a bit more no nails, a bit more glue. Smear that all around there. Push it onto the ping pong ball. Push the two together, and then just make a smooth join. And 
go, that's the finished article. The only thing that remains to do is cut the wood. But don't cut it yet because we need to paint it. So let's do the painting. Okay, when everything's dry, simply get a can of black spray paint. You see why I've left it on the stick? It's easy to paint. I've got blobs of paint and stuff like that unless you're... <coughs> Okay, well, while I'm waiting for that one to dry, I'll come back to this one that's uh, been knocked about a bit, back for repainting. Paint it black and get some reflective tape just to finish it off. You only need to do this if you're going to use it at night, but uh, it's very, very effective. And just put a strip of reflective tape around the top. And that's the finished marker float. As I say, it doesn't look much, but I'll show you how I set it up and use it. So we have the float. We've got a nice heavy weight that's going to sit on the bottom. And we've got the counterbalance weight. This weight is going to be sufficiently heavy to just cock the float when it hangs in the water. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. And we need some line, and a piece of line very fine so that you can break it easily if needs be, if it gets snagged up. Uh, and the length of this piece of line needs to be at least the depth of water you're fishing in, plus a metre or so. So we tie the weight on one end. the float so it just hangs loose there and tie the heavy weight the other end it's best done without consuming wine beforehand Okay, so we have the heavy weight running through until we come to the small weight at the end. And all you do to prepare it for casting is to pull the small weight up to the eye and wrap it around the cork stem. And there's your marker float, all made up, ready to be cast out. And you cast it out in a spawn or something similar. Okay, so there's the marker float and weights all made up on a line, ready to be cast out. Uh, I've only made it uh, a metre and a half because I'm going to test this in the swimming pool or demonstrate it in the swimming pool. But normally I fish in about 10 metres of water, so I'd have about 12 metres of line on there. But just for demonstration purposes, I've got a short length. That's ready to go in, the, in a spawn, something like this. Ignore the weight on the end, uh, the float on the end. I just use that for retrieving it when I get cracked off, which is more often than I wish. And that's it, ready to cast. You just cast the whole thing out up against a, a, a line clip. And it sets itself on the bottom, which I'll show you by demonstrating it in a swimming pool.
so the weight hanging down from the float method like this works in almost all situations but there is a problem there's always the chance of the weight tangling around the, the line like this it usually very slowly untangles and you have to wait until it's there's no friction and the thing can start operating properly but if you've got a clean bottom if you know you're not uh, you're sitting over weed or silt there is a slightly better way and that's with a cork up from the bottom so your float is on the surface like this and you use a floating cork to uh, take up the slack to um, adjust the float to the right depth and the beauty of this is the the uh, rim on the cork pushes away from the, the line and stops it tangling and it operates much quicker and it, it's just better for me and to operate this way you've got the lines fly, um, sliding on the float set it up you just wind it around the thing and all that lot just sits into your spawn. It's a little bit bulkier but uh, it still works but only if you've not got any weed on the bottom or um, silt to stop this floating up action. <coughs> now you can use the same float idea to make a very good adjustable zig uh, setup, zig float. Uh, this is the deluxe version of the marker float because it's got a champagne cork. Much more expensive these items. Right, so we start the setup by taking your weight and leaving it free running on the line. The weight needs to come up against a shop bead. Then we put on the float, free running. Another shop bead. And then to hold everything in place, we need a float stop. So I'll put a float stop on. Oh, that's float stop. And your zig. Uh, for demonstration purposes, I've just stuck a cork through a hook, but uh, a hook through a cork, I should say. We'll just tie that on roughly. Just for demo purposes, you understand. I'll take much more care if I was going to try and catch a car. Okay, so there we have it. You can see that. So we've got the weight, float stop, uh, shop bead, float, shop bead, float stop. Now we need to set the distance between the float and the hook to a set length. Personally, I prefer something like three meters if I'm fishing in very deep water, and that's the reason for using a sliding float stop. Because when you wind in and you've got three metres between your float and your hook and you've got a big fish on, um, it's very awkward to, to manage. So you want to wind it in against the top eye of your rod so that it, as it comes in through the top eye the float slides down towards the hook without any trouble until you've got a, a handleable length of uh, line to, to the fish. So that's the reason it, it has to slide. So we set this to, let's say, three metres. Well, I'm not going to do it here because that's take too long. Then we need everything up tight and start winding. Now before we wind uh, the line around the cork we need a piece of um, PVA tape. I haven't got any PVA tape but I've got a PVA bag so that will, that will do for me. Okay. So this is just PVA tape. And it doesn't matter what it looks like, it's only got a... I'm going to wind that around the cork um, clockwise, just roughly, very roughly. It doesn't matter what it looks like because it's going to be held in place by the line. So now we wind the line around the PVA tape, like that, till we get down to the hook and then you just hook the, the hook of the zig into the PVA tape so that it's holding it. I don't know if you can see that. 
So now you can really put some pressure on that and cast without any possibility of it untangling, uh, of it tangling rather. And you can really pull on there quite hard. You can put a lot of force behind that and uh, get it out a long way. It's not going to come apart. It hits the water, the tape melts, the hook comes away. Oh, that's my knot. Floats up, and then the float comes up against the stop. And then you let the float rise up to the surface of the water. Then you pull in three meters of line, or however length the separation is between the float and the hook. Pull it down, and then you know your zig is on the surface. Then, if you want to fish at one, one meter, you just pull a meter of line in, pull the float down towards the, the float down towards the weight, and uh, you're fishing a meter below the surface. So you can control it exactly, just by pulling your line, winding your line in, and or letting some out. As long as you know that distance between the float stop and the hook, and that's all there is to it. It works very, very well.